So I got married almost a year ago, and I have a fun fact about my engagement ring. It's actually one of my favorite facts, and I love telling people about it so much that here I am making a video about it on the internet. My engagement ring changes color. But not in like a super tacky mood ring, it changes depending on the temperature of my hand kind of way. My ring it contains a stone called alexandrite, or it's, you know, it's synthetic and it was grown in a lab because of resources and ethical reasons, but it works basically the same way. And alexandrite does this really cool thing that's actually called the alexandrite effect, where it looks one color under incandescent light, like normal indoor light, and it looks a different color in sunlight. This is one of my favorite things. It's the reason I asked for this ring when the time came to get engaged. And I enjoy it so much that I wanted to get to the bottom of how it worked. And turns out there is some really cool science happening. So earlier today, it was super sunny out and I went for a walk. And under direct sunlight, my engagement ring is this really lovely, like dark blue, almost sapphire color. Check it out, it's such a good rock. Great shade, nice blue, would recommend. But now I am surrounded by what are more or less standard old incandescent light bulbs, and this thing looks a lot different. I'm gonna switch out the camera lenses here so you can get a nice close up of it. Okay, so under this light, that blue color isn't really there anymore. Instead, the stone looks more purple, almost like an amethyst. You see why I like this thing so much. But okay, I did some digging and here's how it works. Alexandrite is one variety of the mineral chrysoberyl, which is just some beryllium, aluminum, and oxygen. Normally, chrysoberyl is a sort of yellowy green color and has some iron ions mixed into it. But when some extra aluminum ions get mixed in, that is when you get alexandrite. Those aluminum ions are actually really important though because they change the mineral's absorption spectrum. In other words, they change what colors of light that the rock absorbs. This is much better seen than explained, so I made some graphs. Okay, so we've got this graph. On the y-axis, we have how much light the crystal absorbs, and on the x-axis, we've got the rough visual spectrum. So here's the absorption spectrum for chrysoberyl. It has just that one peak, which means it's mostly absorbing light in that purpley blue region. But now here's the absorption spectrum for alexandrite. Because of that slightly different composition, you get a second peak, and that is what causes the fun color change. So even though sunlight looks white to our eyes, it actually has a little more green and blue blue in it. So when you expose alexandrite to sunlight, you get this. That stone is going to absorb most of the orange yellow light and most of the purple blue light. So what you're left with is a greenish blue color. I mean, since my rock is synthetic, that's probably where the differences come in, but the idea is there. Meanwhile, incandescent light is a lot more red. So in that case, there's not a lot of green or blue to transmit. So alexandrite looks more reddish purple. This is so good. I love this. I love that this thing that I wear on my hand every day, I can explain it and I know why it works. And it's also very cool. So when I set out to make this video, I was really only planning to test it in sunlight and in nice incandescent light bulbs, because that's, you know, what I see on a normal day to day basis. And I wanted to know why all of that worked. But while I was researching, I decided to start playing around. And I ended up doing two different experiments with two different kinds of light. And they got even cooler results than I normally see. And okay, I'm just I'm just gonna show you the thing. All right, welcome to the darkness portion of the video. So I've got a candle here. So historically, when I heard people talk about alexandrite, I always heard them say something about the color of it by day and the color by candlelight. But I had never actually tried putting my ring by a candle until very recently, and it is very cool. I had expected it to just kind of be purple like it is in a reddish incandescent light bulb, but the results are actually way more interesting. So let's see what happens. All right, so if you hold this thing up to candlelight, you get this very cool pink color. Check that out, that's such a bright, good color. And what you can learn from that is that candlelight is transmitting even more red light than incandescent light. So the gem has a lot more red light to transmit and it looks this super sweet pink color. There is one other thing I learned though that I definitely want to show y'all. I came across this pen light, which is nothing particularly fancy, it's just a pen light. But while I was messing around with everything, I decided to shine it on my engagement ring and see what happens. And what you get, let's see, is green? 
yeah, check that out. You just get this very good, like, vivid emerald green color that I haven't really seen anywhere else. That's really neat to me, partly because just I like the color. I think it's cool. But also that I can tell you a little bit about this pen light. Like, based on this, my guess is that this pen light has more green in it and less blue than sunlight, which is why the Alexandrite is acting like that. I love that you can learn or at least, like, speculate a little bit about different kinds of light just based on having this one rock. Anyway, thanks for humoring me. Let's, uh, let's turn the lights back on. That's it! That's that's my good rock! Alexandrite isn't the only stone that does this, even though it has the honor of naming the Alexandrite effect. So if you hear about some kind of gem that does a similar thing, the science is probably about the same. Also, and if you are wondering, so I did not have much luck testing this on my own, but it is something I looked into. The two main tests I ran were just sunlight, and incandescent light bulbs, but I also wanted to know what happens if you use a compact fluorescent light, and it turns out those lights are weird. Sunlight and light bulbs and candlelight all have a pretty smooth, you know, light distribution. CFLs are just basically giant peaks. That meant when I kind of played around with them, played around with these light bulbs in my ring, like not much happened. The results really varied depending on the kind of light you were looking at, and it was all very difficult to graph, so here I am. But I did try it, and I learned that CFLs are very efficient, and also a little bit complicated for simple experiments. I ended my video about Petoskey stones from a bit ago with a similar sentiment, but something I really enjoyed about all of this is just, I don't know, this ring is like a thing that I wear in my hand. It's on my person at basically all times, and it's cool for me to be able to explain why it works and how it works and to learn something larger about the world just by asking questions of something that I feel is familiar. If you empathize with that feeling, Welcome. I'm glad to have you. Thanks for listening to me talk about my rock. <laughs> That's what I got. This is my ring. This is my cool science stuff. I hope you learned something new. Go ask questions about the world around you, and if you have any questions for me, go ahead and leave them in the comments. I will do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.